Hey everyone, Jonathan Bradley here, King's Manager of Social Media, back with another one-on-one. -on -one. This time I'm joined by one of the newest members of the Kings, Kevin Herter. Kevin, how you doing, man? Doing good. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for joining us today. We're really excited to speak to you. I'm sure Kings fans are happy to hear from you, so I'm going to jump right in if you don't mind. Yeah. Cool. Good. So what was your initial reaction when you found out that you were headed to the Kings? Initially I was surprised, to be honest. It was, uh, you know, I wasn't expecting in some ways to, to be traded. Mm -hmm. uh, it was something my agent in, in Atlanta had talked through a lot over the past couple of weeks and you know, they had made a couple moves prior to moving me and so I was actually, I was, I was out of the country, I was on vacation and next thing you know I got a call from my agent saying I was heading to Sacramento. So I was excited. Um, obviously this is a fresh opportunity, a team that's in a city that's been hungry to win, mm -hmm. kind of similar to to what it was like when I got to Atlanta and mm -hmm. um, you know, for the most part we were able to turn that around and, and make the playoffs and, and do different things there and, and reach some success so excited to do that here too. Nice so you mentioned you know making the playoffs joining a, a team that's hungry to make the playoffs and having that experience how would you say that your experience with the Hawks helped you grow as a player specifically that Eastern Conference Finals run what are some things that you learned that you can bring with you to Sacramento? You know really with Atlanta it felt like I kind of went through it all. Mm -hmm. You know, you, I got there my first two years, we were, we were really bad, you know, we weren't winning, we weren't trying to win, we had a young team, and it was a team that was trying to get a lot of young guys, a lot of playing time, and uh, then all of a sudden our third year, they made a couple trades and brought some guys in, and, and we got hot, you know, we got hot at the right time, we finished the year really well, and, and obviously made a deep playoff run, and then had some expectations going to last year and, and didn't live up to them, and you know, it was really, you kind of saw everything. You saw the climb up the mountain, and then in some ways you, you saw a little fall down the mountain, and so I feel like I've been through a lot there, having that playoff experience. I've been through a couple playoff series now, um, even at a young age, and so just I know there's, there's guys here that are hungry to win, guys who have been on other teams and achieved playoff success, and so um, it's nice to be with this group. Nice. So you, know, you mentioned being at the top of the mountain and then falling back a little bit. How important do you think that culture, you know, a winning culture, is to obtaining success in the NBA? I mean, it's everything. It's everything. It starts obviously with the front office, with the coaching mm -hmm. staff, and then you know, continues and there's buying with the players. And it's, you know, I, I would assume I haven't met anyone here, but I think people are excited to be here, um, excited to try to end the playoff drought. I know I am. It's really the first thing I heard about when I first got traded here is uh, how long it's been since I made the playoffs and how hungry, how hungry everybody is to make it. So. Um, that culture, hopefully with a new coach, Coach Brown bringing in, and obviously a relatively new front office, and probably a lot of new faces on the roster. Uh, hopefully we can start to build something. Nice. And what do you know about Coach Brown? Like, what are you most excited to experience with him as your head coach? Yeah, I've heard a lot of great things, honestly. Obviously growing up and watching him, uh, for me specifically, the coach of the Cavaliers. I right. know watching him there, obviously last year he was with Golden State, just came off winning the championship. And my first coach in the NBA, Coach Pierce, you know, his top two assistants that were there that I was close with, they all worked under Coach Brown in wow. Cleveland. Mm -hmm. So all of them have reached out and have spoken highly of him so far. And um, I'm excited to play for him, obviously. He's, he's had a lot of experience in this league and, and knows what it takes to, to reach the top level. Nice. Yeah, he comes from a really experienced coaching tree, so we're excited to have him here, and you know, I'm sure the players are excited to play for him. Uh, so just going to your background a little bit, you grew up playing baseball as well. You played in the Little League World Series. Mm -hmm. Why do you think being a multi-sport athlete is beneficial to a player's development? I think it's really important. Obviously, the, the simple answer is you know, sports are supposed to be fun. You know, for me, I think that was important growing up was I had a lot of friends, obviously, in basketball, but I had just as many friends in baseball. And you know, I played baseball up until my senior year in high school, and a lot of that was just to be a kid, to be a regular high school guy. I enjoyed playing the game. Uh, I was already committed to a college and had known that you know, basketball would be my path forward, and uh, I just wanted to play. It was really for the fun of the game. And yeah. for people growing up, there's, there's no reason to, to you know, specifically work on a sport, really. For me, until you get to college, or I guess your, your later years in high school, but uh, people specializing in sports at an early, early age is not something that you know, I particularly agree with. And uh, you get to work different muscle groups. You know, mentally, it's stimulating in different areas, and you get to work on different sports. And um, just be an athlete, just have fun. Yeah, and you see that you know, throughout sports. Most of the, you know, the dominant athletes played other sports growing up, helped them with their hand-eye coordination, footwork, and things like that. So you definitely see that throughout the league. Uh, your dad was the coach of your little league team and he has a little basketball history of his own leading Sienna to their first NCAA tourney. Talk about what it was like growing up being a coach's son and how that helped you develop as a player. Yeah, I come from, it's definitely, it's a basketball family. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all my siblings play, I have an older brother who played Division I, mm -hmm. sister right now who's at Providence, a younger sister that's on her way. Uh, and that started from my dad. It was, you know, I remember just from their earliest age, I don't know what specific age, but 
you know, the, the little tykes basketball hoop in your living room and, and working on that. And um, you know, he had a warehouse. His, his business says it was grown we, when we were growing up. He put a little basketball hoop in the back nice. of his warehouse. And that was somewhere that we went and we shot all the time. Yeah. And obviously having a hoop in the driveway and, and getting up before school and middle school, working yeah. out with my brother. Um, just, you know, he taught us from a young age that you know, any success comes from working hard. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, we never cheated any hard work. Um, like I said, we're, we're getting up in the mornings, we're working out late at night, and for me, having an older brother, that was able to push me every day, mm -hmm. you know, us, us living, growing up together, only being about a year and a half apart, yeah. uh, that was huge. And so still today, my dad used to coach all my teams, but he still coached me on the sidelines. And you mentioned having an older brother and a sister, you know, what did those battles look like, you know, in the driveway, at your dad's warehouse, when you guys were going one-on-one, -on -one? what did that look like? They didn't last very long, to be honest. <laughs> we, weren't, we weren't allowed to play one-on-one -on -one too much, just because you know, we would fight. It was like, you know, we're five minutes into it, it was yeah. a hard foul here, I thought he was pushing me being physical and um, it was a fight really quickly but it was a battle uh, you know, for me growing up I always played up I played up with all his mm -hmm. friends and, and his age group and that got me a lot better and um, you know for for his sake being the other brother and, and always pushing me I'm sure he appreciates and even today how close we are from it mm -hmm. uh, I definitely wouldn't be here you know sitting here today if it wasn't for you know, being pushed by all those people in my life mm -hmm. So I want to shift uh, focus to your high school years and you know a lot of guys get their jerseys retired but your high school took it one step further and made your silhouette the logo for their basketball program. Yeah. <laughs> what does it mean to you to be revered in that way? That was, I mean, that was crazy. That wasn't something I was expecting. Uh, me and my high school coach, we had a really good relationship, obviously, while I was there. And I um, started playing varsity when I was in ninth grade, really entered the program when I was in sixth grade. And so it was just something that he wanted to do something different. He wanted to do something special. He wanted you know, a way to remember me in a different way than, than just retiring the jersey. And, mm -hmm. Um, so now just for the basketball program there, yeah, it's, it's my logo, it's for me, it's, it's a dunk I had while I was a senior there, uh, something that they introduced at the banquet, and uh, for me it's humbling going back, obviously seeing those still in the jersey, and uh, just still feeling a part of the program, and you know, hopefully they, they have it there for a long time. Nice. So during your rookie season, you, spent, you, sh you shared a special moment with Dwayne Wade, you guys had a jersey swap. How did that moment motivate you through the rest of your career up until now, knowing that that was a guy that you idolized growing up? Yeah, I mean that was obviously he was one of my he was one of my favorite players growing up. He wore number three. That's a that's a number I've worn, been wearing really throughout my career. Um, someone that I looked up to, obviously, and, and just did all the right things both on and off the court. And uh, you know that was our fourth time playing him that year. He had done that was his. He was doing jersey swaps with people yeah. all year. And uh, you know I think it was for me it was a respect level. Like he mm -hmm. you know he respected my game. And at that point he had, he had said that you know, he'd seen my game a couple times and was excited for what was to come for me. And mm -hmm. Uh, just hearing from someone like him, again, like an idol figure that for me growing up and to finally get the chance to play against him. I think that was a cooler part for me was, was playing against him rather than get yeah. the jersey. The jersey can now you know, hang up in my house for the rest of my life. But just having the opportunity to guard him and go against him for me was, was just as surreal. And knowing that, you know, knowing the way that you looked at Wade, there's probably a kid out there that's looking at you the same way. You know, did your experience with him motivate you to, you know, take the next step and possibly, you know, influence other, you know, upcoming basketball players? It did. You know, at the time I was I was a rookie. Mm -hmm. So I was just trying to establish myself in the league and uh, just trying to compete, go out there and, and again for someone who's you know multiple time all star, gonna be a Hall of Famer for mm -hmm. him to notice and, and want to change jerseys with me. That was extremely humbling. You know, it's, it felt like at the time I was on the right path. Nice. So over the past four seasons your three point percentage has hovered around a super solid forty percent, but your field goal percentage has risen every year that you've been in the league. What do you attribute that to? Just trying to get better every year. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the 40% three-point mark, I, I don't think it's a mark I've hit yet in my career mm -hmm. that's been a goal of mine. Yeah. Uh, but just trying to grow as a player, obviously, and, and figuring out your games, figuring out what works in the NBA. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some of the things I was doing as a rookie and, you know, some of the, the shots I was taking or some of the moves I was making, mm -hmm. obviously, didn't, some of them didn't work at a high level. And so as you, as you grow in your career, you progress and you continue to work every summer and you get stronger, mm -hmm. kind of start to figure out what works for you and, and what's successful for you in this league. And um, I think that's been a progression of mine is just kind of figuring out my game and what works. And speaking of the summer, what are some things that you've worked on this summer to take your game to the next level? A lot of it is strength. A lot of it's you know, working on my body. Mm -hmm. um, you know, still young, still 23, but you're trying to get to a point where I can really comfortably guard you know, one through four for mm -hmm. the most part. And, um, just being a guy you can rely on defensively and uh, obviously offensively you get stronger you can continue to add different things to your game you know, for me that's playing and, and being better inside the paint inside the three-point line mm -hmm. 
and uh, just being stronger and, and better with your body will help me do that. Now, so you talked about being stronger. You know, for the fans that don't know, what does that look like? Like, what does a typical off-season day look like for you? For me, you know, so far this off-season, I've been, been getting up, and, and I like lifting early in the morning. Um, I'm not a guy that particularly loves lifting. Mm -hmm. I can't say I wake up and it's like, wow, I'm ready to go lift today. But <laughs> something that obviously you know you have to do as an athlete and yeah. to reach my goals, it's something I have to do. So I get that done right away in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, usually go eat breakfast and you know I'm on court really, you know, 11, 12 in the afternoon. Get my get my hour workout in and uh, afternoon has kind of been mixing it up. I've done yoga this summer a little nice, bit. Awesome. Um, been doing PT with the different things. Mm -hmm. uh, just trying to get my body moving and it goes back to growing up and playing a different sport it's you know how can I continue to challenge my body in different ways and different movement patterns and um, so kind of explore different things this off season. Nice and you mentioned that you know lifting will help you accomplish your goals let the fans know what are some of your short-term and long-term career goals? I mean for here it's winning you mm -hmm. know that was a good thing about Atlanta is you know winning is things a lot better than losing mm -hmm. and we did a lot of losing my first two years and um, so I come in here and, and again it's how can we win your life is a lot better when you win yeah. the morale around around the practice facility, around the organization is a lot better when you win. Um, and for me, it's continue how long can I play in this league for. It's, mm. you know, obviously I want to I win at a high level, win rings, and after that it's longevity. How long can I play and be in this league? And um, a lot of that, again, has to do with body work and how I handle myself, how I eat, and um, obviously excited for what's, what's coming ahead. So how do you think that a score of your caliber can help this team take the next step? Just space on the floor, I think, first and foremost. I think you know, De'Aaron kind of gave him the space to, to do what he does, and um, he's a guy that doesn't need much people around him to go get a bucket and go get his own offense. And you know, the more we can give him space, and for me, kind of staying out of his way will we'll do him a lot of good. And uh, obviously with Domas and you know, the way he passes the ball, mm -hmm. you know, being a guy that can cut for him and move off the ball and, and give him space to operate. And you know, Harrison, you know, for me, that was not a matchup I loved last year in Atlanta. Was getting switched on to him, and you know, he brings you in the post, and um, he's, he can put you in a blender. And mm -hmm. obviously, the different guys we have around the team. I know, you know getting Malik in here, and you know, another guy can space the floor, and, um, and Davion, the way he can guard people. You know, he was another guy that, you know, if I got the ball in last year, he was yeah. picking me up full court. I was passing it right back <laughs> to the forward, bringing the ball up. Um, so I think we got a lot of really good pieces. Obviously, um, you know, guys who have who have reached success in different ways. Harrison with a championship ring, obviously. Mm -hmm. and uh, It's a good group of guys. And just I think I fit in well with everybody here. And you know, I think it'll take a little bit, but you'll find my space and find what works for me here in this team. Right, so you mentioned Fox, Domas, Davion. Have you had a chance to connect with any of your new teammates yet? Yeah, a couple of them reached out just nice. over text. Just you know, excited to have me here, ready to get to work. Nice. And speaking of new teammates, um, I believe that you and Keegan have a lot of shared connections. You have the same agency. Uh, both your dads were coaches. Um, and you have a mutual friend in Connor McCaffrey. Have yeah. you had a chance to connect with him at all yet? Yeah, we have. Me and Keegan have texted. Uh, you know, me and Connor, obviously Connor's dad is a head coach at Iowa. Mm -hmm. and he used to be at Siena, which is where my dad went. Mm -hmm. And so Connor lived in upstate New York. And we we're really best friends for like four years and oh, then nice. I moved away. <laughs> yeah. And so you know, we've kept in touch. And obviously I've, I've followed Iowa for afar and um, watched Keegan a lot you know, two years ago. And then this year, how big of a jump he made in college mm -hmm. and then made an even bigger jump, getting drafted number four overall. Um, so we've had a little bit of contact and you know, Connor's already telling me for him how I got to make him do rookie stuff <laughs> and how I should be treating him. And, um, but he's, I've heard nothing but really good things about him. Um, what advice would you give him going into his rookie campaign? It's going to be a lot of ups and downs. Mm -hmm. I think um, that's one thing you learn as a rookie is how to be a professional. You yeah. kind of you learn your own schedule. You learn what works for you. Um, it's tough being a rookie in this league. It's tough being a rookie off the court. Everything's so new. You move to a new city. Mm -hmm. You're away from all your college friends and you're away from all your old teammates. And I just remember it felt like there was a there was a lot of things going on and there were so many new things in your life. And at the end of the day, you got to figure out how to be really good out here and everything else can kind of take care of itself. So he's already doing a great job. He's he's been a lot better in summer league than I know I was my, <laughs> my first uh, my first couple times out there on the court. He looks great. And uh, I'm sure he'll figure it out. We got guys in the obviously in the locker room that'll help him out. Nice. And you're not a rookie, but you're in a new city. What are some things that you're looking forward to experiencing here in Sacramento? Just getting out, seeing what the city has to offer. Yeah. Uh, admittedly, I've not been in North California really very much in my life at all. I think yeah. the only two times I've been here, or a couple times when we played here, obviously very, against yeah. the Kings. Mm -hmm. um, so just kind of seeing what's out there. I've heard a lot about you know Napa Valley mm -hmm. and, and the city and, yeah. and all the great fans and great people that they have here, yeah. and just kind of getting to explore and, and live in California. So. 
you mentioned that you haven't been out here a lot and you know you played in the Eastern Conference so Kings fans may not have been able to see you play much what's one thing that you want them to know about you and your game it's a good question I think uh, I think just unselfishness I think you know, I'm willing to do a lot of different things I think offensively you'll be able to see that right away just how I pass the ball how I play within an offense and for the most part play within myself and you know, defensively just you know, willing to do a lot of different things, playing good team defense, you know, keep my guy in front of me. I think a lot of it's just unselfishness, trying to be a team guy again, just trying to win. Nice. And what are some things that you like to do outside of basketball? Like, what is your ideal off day look like? Ideal off day is being done working out at 1 o'clock and going and hitting the golf course. For right now, go. again, that's the off season. Um, I've heard there's really good golf out here. I'm yeah. excited to meet all the people that uh, are playing golf out here. Um, so for me, that's a lot of fun, obviously, getting together with friends, going out to dinner. But uh, if I can golf in the afternoon, yeah. play a little bit of video games, maybe at night, watch a TV show here or there. Um, I'm a big baseball fan, so I watch baseball. I watch the Yankees almost every day, nice. just kind of having them on the background while I'm doing stuff. And, um, but for the most part, I've heard good things about the golf out here, so I'm excited to explore that a little bit. Nice. Yeah, when I first moved out here, that was one of the first questions I got. Do you golf? <laughs> Not yet, but, <laughs> but catch me in a year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to, you know, working on my swing and getting a little bit better. So. Perfect. Um, lastly, you spent a couple years at the University of Maryland. I'm from Maryland, so I have to ask you, mm -hmm. what's your favorite thing to put Old Bay seasoning on? Old Bay, I'm not a seafood guy. So okay, I'll put yeah. Old Bay, I mean, I'll put on anything. You know, yeah. people out there, they put it on chips, they put it on chicken, they put it on burgers, they put yes, it on sir. steak. It's, it's really everything, <laughs> yeah. but uh, I mix it up. I just, that was a thing. When I got to Maryland, I was shoving crab in my face, yeah. shoving different <laughs> seafood, and I'm not a big seafood guy. That's so, fair, that's yeah, fair. For me, it's uh, boardwalk fries. Boardwalk, okay, yeah, fries are good. Yeah. You can do fries, any potatoes. Yeah, like exactly. Right yeah, it's hitting. Okay. <laughs> well, good. that's all I got for you, man. I certainly appreciate your time. Thank you so much. This is Jonathan Bradley for Kevin Herter. Thanks for tuning in. Go Kings.